Yo, what's good, everybody? As always, it's your boy Direct here with Rap Get It Grit again. Um, you're gonna hear this on the podcast, but it's not necessarily the regular podcast format. Q is not here. We're gonna do more podcasts soon and all that. But basically, um, yeah, y'all. The comments on the last blog said, "Yo, the audio's low." Da 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 da. So we're gonna try to do blogs like this. Let me know if the audio's too low. Let me know what it is. Let me know what you want to do. Please put comment. The audio's good. I'm gonna crank it loud as hell on this one, so I don't want to hear no complaints. All right. But anyway, we're gonna get into RBE's Pearly Gates two in a second. I thought it was a very important night, and we're gonna explain why. But before I even do that, um, so I know, uh. Lately, I've been dropping a lot less blogs and just material on the channel, and it's really been a motivation thing. I know y'all have seen me on some of my other blogs, basically talking about, um, you know, battle rap isn't doesn't have to give you that feeling as it used to be, and that was really affecting me. So I was just doing, you know, working on other stuff in life, and um, I was in Publix. Now I don't know. If, I think it's this is just a self thing. I don't know if they got Publix on the West Coast or the Northeast, but Publix is basically like, a, um semi high end the grocery store they got good ass chicken there i don't know the grocery store with good ass chicken and some overpriced shit so i'm in there trying to get some chicken wings and um this dude was there with his family his name slips my mind right now but basically he's like yo yo you the dude from rap grid right and the grind time and all that and i'm like yeah what's up man i dap him up we talk about battle rap a little bit and um he was like yo you still doing blogs and i was kind of like yeah you know not nah. and he was just like like, don't bullshit me. Like, I felt like the way he looked at me, like, yo, man, like, there's a lot of people out there blogging, but, like, I mess with you personally. You know what I mean? And I, what I, the whole reason I'm saying this is this is no slight to anyone else that does battle rap blogging because I'm sure y'all have your own fans. This is more of, like, it's a motivational factor. I feel like sometimes we get on YouTube and we look at these views and instead of connecting actual people to the views, they start to be empty numbers after a while. You see a million views, 100,000 views, even 10,000 views. And you forget there's, there's people connected to every one of those views. And, um, you know, it, it made me feel like I was taking granted of everybody that supported me. Think like like not realizing that, oh, 50,000 actual people watch this blog and X amount of people commented and people anticipate my stuff. Sometimes I just, you know, that slips my mind. So that's a it's a. Motiv motivational factor to drop more stuff and to just be more connected with you guys and social media and stuff like that so um yeah thank you to everyone that's been rocking with me and um people that don't rock with me if you rock with another blog or whatever salute them you know what i mean get their views up you know what i mean and to any other bloggers who's watching this man don't don't lose sight of your following man because you end up doing something else in life they'll they'll follow you into that if they if they really true fans of just you as a person and you speaking but anyway um let's talk about rbe's pearly gates 2 this was a very um it was an important night in battle rap and i'm gonna explain why in a second um shout out to everyone who purchased the stream shout out to uh born octavia steve and people that was um hosting a live stream shout out to you know uh the saga daylight loso mook you know everybody that if i forget your name sorry but everyone who jumped on the stream and did an interview it was dope i think it was one of the best streams we've done um and the next one's only going to get better you know i got a list this long of stuff that you know we want to suggest for the next one and that we're gonna fix um and yeah, uh, I think Bourne was really popular on the stream. I I've been talking to him for a while about getting on the stream. Just the way he talks one on one about battle rap. It's a lot of passion. It's a lot of fact. And it's a lot of knowledge. And even just his opinion. He, ha he has a very crisp and concise way of getting it across. So, bam. Uh, you know, Bourne was on there. He was good. And, um, you know, a lot of people asked me to do it. So I think for the Mook and Averb battle, um, if you're looking at me like, wait, they didn't announce it. They actually announced it today. So Mook is battling Verb. I think me and Born will be um, the main uh, ringside announcers stream host for that. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. 8818. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about Pearly Gates 2 now. 1SK battles was Blick the Barbarian versus Luck Dollars and J Slash versus Bigger Bigelow. Like... Both both battles was was decent, but honestly, Blick the Barbarian just had a great performance. It stood out to me. 
Um, I'd like to see uh, what RBE does with him moving forward. Blick has been around for a long time, um, and he he team high me all day, and he's just he's dope, man. Just the way he put his stuff together, and he even said a lot of lines that um. People might say, oh, I heard a rendition of that before, but just the way he had the crowd and everything and the way he flipped it and the way just his poise and crowd, it was dope. It was really dope. So Blick stood out from the 1SK battles. ARP, Lauren Shotter, let's see what you do with Blick. Um, two and two didn't go down. It was replaced with Jay Murder versus um, B Magic. Now, the thing with B Magic is that everybody says, that uh you know he ain't prepared no more he suffers from that syndrome that a lot of unmotivated battlers suffer from whether whether it's they're preparing at the last minute they don't got the same competitive juice of fire that they once had and they don't bring that same energy to the table and it results in a choke or just a a weird performance or something like that and um i gotta say b magic showed up he it was shades of that b magic that we all know to grow and love maybe a quick stumble i think in the second round or something like that but the thing is that jay murder had the best performance of his life and um to be honest he said a couple schemes that i never heard anyone else flip before and I, i've heard a lot of schemes um he had an and one scheme and i don't think in a battle of big magnitude anyone did an and one scheme and as he was saying it i'm looking at people are going crazy every time he names one of the and one ballers and i'm like yo this is crazy nobody has done this as of late like this is this is one thing that anyone uh remotely related to hip-hop or battle rap like just you would think this was would be the first scheme is and one but he did his thing on that and um that was something else memorable jay murder did. it was like an animaniac wacko and yakko on the dot type joint um that was good so jay murder he showed I, I literally think that was the best performance of his career and i think it was a sign that b magic is warming back up uh to maybe get to the level that he was at it was a i thought it was a very good battle nobody was disappointed but jay murder definitely got that um let's talk about daylight and loso Loso was what you expect. He was a good Loso. We actually had the uh, champion scoring cards, and they said you'd score each round from 6 to 10. I had Daylight. His round 1 was a 10. I had Loso's round 1 a 9. Daylight's round 2, I had it as a 10. I think I put a 10 plus. Now, I know the plus didn't mean anything just for me personally. If I thought it would, because to me, there's an instance where both battlers can do incredible and both of y'all can have 10s, but just for me personally, I just put a little plus in the upper right-hand corner, a little coefficient joint to let me know that I thought if it came down to it and it looked like a tie, nah, he had a little plus right there. So that's what I did. I know it was cheating, but hey, I fuck with the pluses. So I had the first two rounds, 10-9 in favor of um, Daylight in the last round. They like, he, he choked, but he was like, yo, I choked. And people laughed and he got extra time. Then he spit a couple bars and it looked like he just lost where he was and he just let it go. So I gave him a seven that round and I gave Loso, was, Loso was, was a 10, I believe, in the third round. So yeah, if you go by rounds, I had Loso winning. No, no, my fault. If you go by rounds, I had Daylight winning. But um, I guess if you were to just look at the battle as a whole and add up the score, Loso would have won because Daylight had a low score in that last round and it was close the whole time but uh that that's my mathematical way of telling you uh who i thought won um another great battle man i, I think it would have it, it would have went down as an amazing battle if daylight finished his third but he didn't come to play no antics he just had really good raps and loso was the same way you know what i mean um second round from daylight was my favorite round of that battle um now we got math off and ill will now before even going into this you know math um he seems like he's doing better he's telling arp he's going 3-0 ill will uh, we haven't t heard him talk like that in a while and i think ill will is just a great matchup for math let me tell y'all let me tell y'all some shit about math hoffa real quick right when math hoffa battled iron solomon like, I wanted Iron to win. I was more familiar with Iron. Like, you know, I was doing the jump off and the freestyle stuff. But when Math hit the white bread, why well, you come for dead? You want to battle? Me hit you with a bottle in your lumpy head and all that stuff and this large cup of coffee from Starbucks. And I mean, I felt like Solomon killed the first round of Math when the second two. And I said, you know what? I like Math because at that time you had the backpack freestyle people. 
and you had the dudes that was rapping about street life and doing a million unlimited rounds. And I always thought that if the dudes who rapped about the street shit incorporated some of the funny, goofy shit from the freestyle, you would have a style that was impeccable. And this is, I don't know, like 2006 or something like that. And, um, you know, obviously a lot of people have incorporated that now, but math was one of the first people I saw with an authentic, believable street style that could switch it up and be funny. That wasn't a corny way. And I always thought he was ahead of the curb for that reason. And he was always one of my favorites after that battle because of that. And even, you know, there's moments that math has had and like the T-Rex battle, the dose battle, Luciano crack battle and the Chilla Jones battle are the four battles of math post smack dvd era that stick out to me um I, he's had his ups and downs whether it's it's being ill prepared or um him going through something having to bounce back from a lot of controversy but uh i dap math up before he, he even rapped against ill will and i said thanks yo and he kind of looked at me like and i'm like it's like i I can understand from the way that you're speaking that you're you're like mentally back and I know you about to kill it. And he was like, yeah. So with that being said, I don't have, let me see if I have my scorecard for math and ill will. Um, I know I posted it on Twitter, but it should be in my photo album right here. Uh, math and ill will. Oh, that's videos. Okay, so I had Mass first round scored as a nine. Ill Will's first round scored as a nine. Mass second round scored as a ten plus. Ill Will's second round as a ten. Mass second round, third round as a ten. Ill Will's third round as a ten. That's actually a tie. The only thing separating them is that I gave Mass second round a ten plus. So if you had to hold the gun in my head, I would tell you Math won. But yo, first of all, that's my favorite battle of this year. And honestly, after like one and a half rounds, it was one of my favorite battles of all time because it was so obvious how good of a matchup it was, man. Like a lot of leagues, like let's call it what it is, they suck at making matchups. Right. It's like you just book people with names and think that you're gonna get credit because you booked the good names. Ask anybody that's been to multiple battle rap events. You can tell off bat when a matchup is great and it's just going to work. You can, you honestly, for, for, you could tell off the blogs. And uh, if you ever seen these people um, verse like Math and Ill Will, uh, they both got a gritty street style, but they both have uh, a wittiness. Ill Will with the freestyles, Math with the jokes. You know, they, they both have an extra edge to them, and they're both very well-rounded. And I think Math has a huger name, and uh, he as he seems to be more uh, well-marketed to the masses. And Ill Will has just been on a lot more cards, being more consistent and great as of late. And, um, yo, that battle was amazing, man. It's, hard, it's very hard to call. Like I said, I had it the first round both nine and the last two rounds both ten. Uh, like the rebuttals from Ill Will, uh, the, the Mav had a uh had a line where he was like, "I squeezed the nose on Will, like yo, home, smell you later." And I, we I tweeted out the little the Will Smith meme and everything, and people, you know, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. It's crazy battle. I'm definitely calling it a classic. It's probably one of the top three RBE battles of all time. And it's got to be in my top 10 favorite battles off one watch. Haven't watched back to. F no, I can't lie. I fast forwarded to watch the yo home smell you later. And the um, bitch has been been switching up on on Will since Aunt Vivian. Like. And the Jamaican, yo, man, listen, it's a classic battle. It's nuts. Go watch it. It's everything is hyped to be. Um, and what whatever you if, if you haven't seen it yet, and you're imagining like, yo, I think the battle now is better. Whatever you imagine it could be, it's way better. It's a great battle. Um, past day and A-verb. Um, without doing a round-by-round -round breakdown, um, this is what I think happened. A-verb is known for not taking every battle seriously. Late, lately, he's been known for that, and that's not his whole career in general. Um, but he, he's also... He's 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 shown flashes of even though he's a uh, dread verb, he's shown flashes of of uh, Dax uh, S curl box wave spinning verb. And um, 
this was the biggest thing for me is that he's had a lot of lyrics lately, especially, you know, like the beat out battle, but he hasn't had the same aggression in that, you know, like that, like, you know, when somebody rap from their diaphragm, that umph in their chest, he hasn't really had that as of late. And um, it seemed like he wrote for Pat Stay because he had some good material. But when he found out he was battling Mook, I think he decided to put an extra umph in aggression in the beginning of his battle to show people, hey, I still have that in me. That's something that I didn't know of Verb Abandon. But um, he just came out the gate with a showtime in the first round and he was rapping his ass off. Like Verb is one of the when he's on he's one of the most well wrapped not even when he's on just you know if you break his stuff down one of the most well wrapped battle rappers and i appreciate that he has his own style that he brought to the game even though it's lyrical it's not a b c then break this down it's, he just has a very you could tell he knows how to rap he's a rapper then became a battle rapper and mastered both that's how he sounds now pat stays whole vibe throughout this battle some serious a lot of jokes but the jokes translated well to the crowd people say oh we don't want to hear jokes but listen if the jokes are bars and the bars are jokes what can you say pat was saying some crazy shit that was flooring the crowd verb was rapping very good i think i don't think he might have slipped in the third round but he, he got the point across he did very good you can't be upset with verb's performance but pat stay he, he took the crowd in the palm of his hand, and I think he needs to come back to RBE. I think this would be uh, a great place for him to frequent. The New York crowd loved him. And uh, I just think, like, oh, next card, Pat Stay and Ill Will. I would love to see that battle. Pat Stay versus Ill Will. ARP, can we set that up? Fans, can you, uh, not even fans, yo, my peoples, can you just get in the comments and, and tell me what you think about Pat Stay versus Ill Will? I would love to see that. It would be an amazing battle. But yeah, um, so Verb has Mook next. And I'm going to talk about that in another blog. Um, but he, he did, Verb, Verb did his thing to have people still interested. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that. I'll do get super in-depth with Mook and Verb in another joint. Um, so yeah, Pearly Gates 2 was good. Now, this is why I, I wanted to say that Pearly Gates 2 was important, right? Now, you have where i want to start right so you have you had grind time in the new era of battle right we have grind time and smack they're going like this grind time falls off king of the dot king of the dot and smack start going parallel smack becomes like so all many celebrities they start going up then drake comes king of the dot starts going up and it's like smack is on top king of the dot is right here um as of and then you have don't flop also right those are those are the the big three those are the big three for a large period of time, right? Then you have other, like, battlers start making their leagues and stuff like that. You have a lot of them come and go. But the main is, so, but now, Don't Flop fell off a little bit lately. Then you have uh, you have leagues popping up in England. But King of the Dot and URL have always remained consistent. Doesn't really look like you can unseat either of them just because they put in so much work. Now, there's a lot of crazy shit behind the scenes of battle rap. Some of it not my business, not my place to even speak about on camera. But the battle is feel it, and I feel like the fans feel it too. And you hear little things left and right, but it affects the mood of battle rap. Somewhere along the lines, battle rap just is it's not it hasn't this is what I was talking about in the beginning. It just hasn't been as fun as it once used to be. Right? I used to go to events and genuinely have fun. Now it's just like everybody's stressed out. You know what I'm saying? That something always goes wrong. You know, and and like just just weird shit. Battle rap doesn't give you the same vibe it used to give, right? So I always said if someone was able to recapture that competitive vibe and spirit, we'd be good. Now you enter the uh like the bullpens and the the RBEs and even the Queen of the Rings. You know what I'm saying? They were all rising up at a point in time where people were looking for a new material. Now Queen of the Rings been around a little longer, but you guys get what I'm saying. So. Just in my personal opinion, the events I've had the most fun at lately have been the RBE events and the bullpen events. I feel like it's a new look. They don't have all the same rappers. You know what I mean? Um, it's a different vibe. Like like when you when you get all your money, and not, I'm not saying other leagues don't pay everybody all their money, but the battlers walk in, they're smiling. You know what I'm saying? There's food in the venue. The, the crowd feels the vibe and there's like a certain energy in the air at a dope battle event at a whack-ass battle event it's a whack-ass energy in the air right 
So we've had a lot of good battles lately, the volume ones and stuff like that. But Pearly Gates 2, it just, it just, there was a really good vibe in the air that I loved. And that mixed with the Mook announcement, it just gave, R, I feel like RBE just got this push, man. And you hear a lot of people saying RBE has jumped into the second spot behind Smack. I've even heard some people saying that RBE is the best league right now. I think that when you're in a competitive industry, you have to constantly remain creative and push the boundaries. Don't just shadow and copy everybody else. But once you do that, you unlock your true potential and you honestly put a strain on the rest of the energy to catch up to whatever you're doing. URL led like that for a while. King of the Dot led like that for a while. Grind Time led like that for a while. Scribble Jam, Smack DVD, whatever you, whatever, jump off TV. But it feels like there will always be another, someone to always keep you on your toes. And that's what RBA has become, rising up the ranks, treating people good, paying people, reviving people's careers. That's the main one, reviving people's careers when no one was fucking with them. And now it feels like they got good karma. Pearly Gates 2 was a success. The pay-per-views are all doing really well. If Murder Mook versus Averb is a success, RBE, some shit we got to speak about. My name is Direct. I will be dropping more blogs. The audio will be loud. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Next. Greatest Battles Murder Mook. Averb interview. Murder Mook interview. Pearly Gates 2 interviews. We got some other stuff going on. Thank you for staying locked in with me. Salute. Oh yeah, and go Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics. 4-1. Boston Celtics, Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. I said it. Eastern Conference champions. Golden State versus Celtics. Let's go.